I greet you this day in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome you to St. James's Church on this, the baptism of our Lord, also observance of Epiphany, and the first Eucharistic celebration of our new priest, Blake Singer. Our service begins now with the opening acclamation found in your worship bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. There, there is one body and one spirit. There is one hope and God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, Father, Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son, anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. Reading from the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 29 responsively by half verse on page 620 in the Book of Common Prayer. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And now turn like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the flesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord shall give strength to his people.
Holy Ghost of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighted on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of our loving and liberating and life-giving God, amen. amen. Good, morning. Good morning. For those of you we didn't see last week on New Year's Day, happy New Year. That's not to chide you or anything mostly really because Happy New Year is one of the many things that I want to say this morning in greeting. We have lots and lots that's gone on in our liturgical life together, in our life as a faith community at St. James's. Happy New Year, Happy Epiphany, Congratulations to Blake on his ordination, baptisms this morning, the renewal of our baptismal vows. That's a lot going on in a week. To go from the beginning of the year to the new beginning for Blake in his priesthood, to the recognition of two new beautiful young children as members of the body of Christ. I don't normally get teary, but this morning as I was on the way to church, I got really emotional. Because, like I think many of you know, the work to get to all of these moments isn't work we do alone. Yesterday at Blake's ordination at Christ Church in Glen Allen, the preacher did a wonderful job of talking about all the people who are with us on the journey toward whatever milestone we might be on. He was talking about the particular gauntlet that people in formation for the priesthood go through to get to the day of their ordination. But there are so many life journeys like that where we can't do it alone, right? Where the way that we are formed, who we become is deeply and beautifully shaped 
by those who journey with us, who walk the way with us, who know us and love us and hold us accountable. I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. Surrounded this morning by family and friends as you baptize your boys. I'm sure all of y'all know what I'm talking about because I'm sure there's been some moment in your life where you've taken that pause and looked around to take stock and in gratitude for who surrounds you on your journey. Does that sound familiar? Okay, <laughs> I'm just making sure. Like maybe it's just me, guys. <laughs> I get the privilege of standing up here and looking at the view. I don't think that very often we look at one another when we gather together in church. We don't often turn and look at one another to recognize who it is that journeys with us as we live our life as Christians and as people of faith. This morning, as you come back from communion, I want to invite you to look out at the rest of the folks who are here because we are entrusted to one another. In one of the questions uh, during the baptism service, the celebrant asks the congregation this, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. And joyously, together we say we will. Several times a year we gather for baptism and we make that promise as a community to support the people who are getting baptized. And vicariously then we make that promise to support their parents and their grandparents. Because this week, like many weeks, has been a reminder that we need that village. We need all of those folks to surround us as we do the work of living or parenting. None of us would be where we are if we hadn't had some sorts of communities that said yes. Will you do all in your power to support this person in their life in Christ. What does supporting this person or these persons in their life in Christ look like? A lot of it, I think, is about knowing and being in deep relationship with one another. Later on in the baptismal service, we say together the baptismal covenant where we talk about and pray about what we believe about God, about Jesus, about the spirit, and about the church. But then those questions at the end of the baptismal covenant tell us what kind of people we are to be as Christians, to continue in the breaking of the bread, in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord, to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself, to strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being. Those promises that we make and that we reaffirm in our baptismal covenant are the roadmap for how we are to be the people who surround one another, who journey with one another, who raise up one another over that lifetime of faith. Today, when we baptize, when we celebrate Blake's ordination, when we proclaim the light of Jesus made known to the world and the feast of the Epiphany, we celebrate and affirm that this is the work we are called to do together and we are called to do it in love. So to quote that blessing that I use at the end of the services, 
I leave you with this hope and prayer and reminder. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. That is my hope and my prayer for each of us as we promise to do that work and renew that promise to one another and this community. So with that said, are you all ready for your kiddos to be baptized? Yes? Well, amen. Let's make some new Christians. <laughs> All right, as we begin the baptismal part of our service, I just want to normalize what will probably happen, which is that the kids will come in from Children's Chapel in the middle and they'll come up here and it'll be a little bit of a ruckus, but I think that's okay because it'll be a little bit of a holy ruckus. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> the candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. So parents and sponsors, I invite you to name each of these boys by name. Yep. I present John Wharton Baker to receive the sacrament of baptism. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. I present Edward Ferrier to receive the sacrament of baptism. All right, this is for parents, godparents, all of y'all. Will you be responsible for seeing that the children you present are brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Amen. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Amen. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Amen. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Now this is for all of us. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Now let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he appeared to Peter, and then he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
you believe in God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the hope of eternal life, and the life Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will, God's Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's Now let us pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and your truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Do you want to to pour the water? Okay. The Lord be with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would invite the congregation to be seated. I can hold it. All right. Oops, sorry. All right, John, you ready? All right. John, I baptize you in the name of the Father, I know, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me get him back. There you go. All right. Ready? 
receive this light as a sign of the new life which has been kindled in you. Amen. All right, Teddy, you ready? Yeah? Do you think I could pick you up so you can see up here? No? Okay. That's okay. You can come right here, then. Or how about actually over here so folks can see about that? All right. You ready? Teddy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, it won't hurt. Teddy, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. You want your candle? Yeah? Okay. Good job. Thank you. Receive this light as a sign of the new life that has been enkindled in you. Amen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. I'd invite the congregation to stand. <coughs> And let us welcome the newly baptized together. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with one another. folks. Welcome to St. James's on an exciting uh, Sunday morning of the Epiphany and the Baptism of our Lord and uh, a chance where children get to play with fire. So it's a <laughs> great time here at St. James's. Um, if you're a visitor or a guest, we're so glad to have you with us. Um, just a reminder too, for those who are visiting for the baptism, uh, we have at St. James what we call an open communion rail. So all of you who receive communion in your home churches, you can come forward and receive communion. So uh, even if you're not an Episcopalian, we're going to make you an Episcopalian today because you're part of our church family. So please come on up. Um, as I referenced at the beginning of my uh, service today, we also are very pleased this morning to be able to uh, witness uh, Blake Singer's first uh, communion celebration as a priest of the church. Paul Walker, who was our priest, uh, preacher yesterday, talked about the process, and uh, Blake and I could tell some stories about the process over a glass of wine or maybe a cup of coffee would be better. But um, it's, it's been a long journey for he and Kilpie, and it's been wonderful to be part of that journey with them. And as many people were at the service yesterday, it was a very moving experience, and uh, certainly I thought about the folks that supported me. I'm sure Blake felt that as well. Uh, but nobody gets to that point as a, an ordination without a lot of love and a lot of support 
from a lot of folks, and I know y'all have also been there for Blake and Kilpie. So I'm grateful to all of you and grateful that we can all be here and share in this wonderful celebration with him. Um, following our service this morning, we do have an epiphany party over in uh, Valentine Hall, and we'll also be uh, celebrating Blake as well. Um, two things just to call to your attention quickly. Um, Truly one of the high points each year is our Martin Luther King Jr. Even Song. It's only a week away, believe it or not, next Sunday, 5 o'clock. It'll feature the Norfolk State University Concert Choir plus our own St. James's. Uh, the renowned organist conductor, Dr. Carl Haywood, would be with us. It's always an incredibly moving evening and in a, in a time where we're still struggling with so many different issues in our culture and society. It's a great witness to us to be there to reaffirm our commitment uh, to racial justice and racial peace and also working for greater understanding between all God's people. And it is part of our witness and our ministry as Christians, so I encourage you to come out. Also, this is the first Sunday of our backpack drive for Caritas. Um, bring lightly used or new backpacks for men and women of Caritas. You can leave them in the narthex today through January 26. Um, also, um, our bridge week or the week we'll be working there, I think, is January 20 through 26. Yeah, January 20 through 26. More information in the e-chimes. Also, um, I think Amelia is kicking off a new Bible study. Starts this week. There's more information uh, in your bulletin about it, but this will be Thursday evening. Um, and there's not going to check IDs, but it's kind of one in the evenings meant for people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, or those who like to lie about those things. Um, <laughs> but it'll meet on the second and fourth Sundays of each month and you're encouraged to come out and be part of that as well. But again, if you're a guest or visitor, we're so glad to have you with us today on this glorious Sunday. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. God bless his 
things be said of us. He doesn't forget us. He sends out his love. Any children would like to come forward now to kneel at the rail during the celebration of communion, please come on down at this time. this time we pause as we lift up in prayer the sick and those who have asked for our prayers, remembering especially Mary Lee, Ree, Dury, Steve, Paige, Stacy, Butch, the Cobble family, Cindy, Elizabeth, Paula, Tom, Mary, Jennifer, Helen, Kathy, Warwick, Barbara, Thomas, Anne, the Maddox family, Bunky, John, John, Carol, Courtney, Mickey, Sandra, Larry, Phil, Bobby, Bradford, Emily, Abigail, Langdon, Anne, the family of Terry Wallace, Hudnall, Liz, Susie, Aaron, Garrett, Eugene, Kevin, and Sethon. And in the sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, we remember Pat Cavanaugh, Harrison Cobble, Fairby Cooper, Peter Powell, and Patricia Ware, who died recently, and the Reverend and Mrs. Richard Royal Baker III, in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given. Our service continues with the celebration of Holy Communion Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is right. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, James, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our sacrifice is pa- our, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and fi- feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I invite you to kneel as you are able for the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, by the power that turned into water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, the love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be God.